Hi, besties. It's just about time for, oh my, as usual, I'm looking ever so lovely. <laughs> I take so much time to do my appearance up before I do videos. This is real life. So I did up some spinning kits for sale at Geek Fest. So they're with drop spindles or hand spindles, whichever you want to call it, and some hand dyed roving. I would like to welcome anybody who purchased one of these kits and has followed their link to this video. For my regular subscribers, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to use a hand spindle. This one's kind of pretty. Oh, it's so girly. So if you purchased a kit, you will have a spindle of some sort. There were a couple different designs. It will be a top whirl spindle, meaning that the whirl is at the top as opposed to a bottom whirl spindle, which the spindle or the whirl would be at the bottom. Okay, so you'll have your spindle and your roving. The only other thing that you might need is a piece of string of some kind, a chunk of wool or just a normal piece of string and just make it into a loop. You may not need it, you may need it. I'll show you the two ways to do it. If you struggle with the one, then you can get a piece of string and make it easier on yourself. All right, so I'm going to adjust the camera and we're gonna get started and I will teach you how to use your hand spindle or as they call it, a drop spindle because sometimes it drops. <laughs> All right, let me adjust the camera and we'll get to this. So first we need to prepare our roving. So you can see that I have this roving in a lovely braid. Looks like this. So we need to unwind it. So try one end, see if you can find an end and untuck it. And you can see how it goes through this loop and you have to keep pulling it through every time, switch to the other end of the roving. And then untuck your end, and then you can just bloop, 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 unbraid your roving. Okay, so now you've got a long string roving. Now it's been in storage and it has been wet and dried so it's probably what's called compacted meaning if you look at it it's sort of all bunched up like this. So the first thing you can do is just give it a whip crack and that'll loosen it up a little bit okay. But for what we're going to do I wouldn't worry about it too much for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this long strand of fiber. We're going to start about the middle. So take your ends. None of this is precise guys. I don't do precision. So put your ends together. Find about halfway. Take your fiber and we're just going to open it up just by pulling out to the side. And that'll just loosen up your fibers so then you can just pull. Oh, no, nope, still no go. So if it still won't break apart, just open that up some more. And, and you can pull and it'll slide apart. So take one half of this. Wrap it up. And put that back in your bag. We're going to work with smaller amounts because we're learning. Don't try to, you know, take out the wild stallion when you're just learning to ride. Let's keep it down to the, you know, really old gelding who's quiet and slow. And we can figure out what we're doing. So we're just going to start with half of the length. So I have half the length here. What I'm going to do next, find the middle again. Spread out the roving. And then I'm going to take just a little piece. 
So it's maybe the thickness of my finger. I'm going to start pulling. Now I'm going to go one way and I'm just going to pull that. You might have to shake it out to get the twist out of it. I'm going to pull that off all the way to one end and then I'm going to pull that off all the way to the other end. Okay, so keep the skinny piece, take the big piece, put it aside for now. We're just going to worry about this one little skinny piece. Now, <clears throat> One of the things you're going to need to know to spin yarn with your hands, with a spindle, with a wheel, however you choose to do it, the fiber handling is going to be more or less the same. So roving is all the fiber has been combed and it's all going in the same direction. Now wool has scales. And those little scales like to cling together. Oh, I have a kitty cat coming to visit. So what we want to do is we want to loosen that up just a little bit so that we can get it to do what's called drafting. So you can see here, I'm just taking the fiber and just pulling it open a little bit. Okay. Now, you don't always have to do this, but we're doing this because we're learning. And the less things that we have to fight with while we're learning how to use the spindle, the better. So we're going to do a lot more prep than you would normally do for spinning because we're learning and there is nothing wrong with that. That's like training wheels on a bike. Nobody's going to complain when a little kid learns how to ride with training wheels, right? You take them off when you get better. So don't let experienced spinners tell you that this you can't do this. This is not right. That's not the way it's done. We're starting. We're learning. So we're going to take baby steps and we're going to keep the training wheels on the bike. So we're just going to open up all this fiber and it also lets you feel your fiber because fiber is nice and soft and fluffy and it's fun to play with. Okay. So just very, very gently, just spreading apart that chunk of fiber that we have, just opening it up a little bit. And we're just going to work our way all the way down that strand that we have. So now we've made it to the end. So we have this long strand of fiber, but now we've fluffed it up a bit. Now, the first thing I want you to do is to learn how to draft. So every breed of sheep has what's called a staple length, and that's how long the wool is when it's shorn off of the sheep. That's called your staple length, which is the average length of that piece of wool. So if we want to discover what our staple length is, you can just take the end of your fiber, just pinch that. Don't hold tight here. I'm just kind of gently cradling it in my hand and you just pull out some fibers. Okay. Now this could still be a couple of lengths. So pinch either end and just pull, then line them up again, pinch either end and then pull. Okay, so now I'm at my staple length because it's just pulling the fiber from hand to hand. So we know that this fleece has a staple length about that long. Okay, so let's just set that on our knee so we know that's about our staple length. Now we're going to go back to our fiber. So if you start within your staple length. Let me just get this up where you can see it a little better. There's your staple length. So if you try to pull at that staple length, eh, you're really going to have to fight because you're basically holding both ends of the same piece of wool and you're trying to pull that apart. So when you go to do what's called drafting, that's when you want to pull the fibers by each other to make it thinner so that you're not just adding twists to this and making a super thick yarn, right? So when you grab the roving, you can pinch here, then pinch here and pull. It's hard to explain a feeling, but you'll know it when you try it. You can feel how it's easily slipping by. 
And you can see here, let me just bring you in a little closer so I can show you this draft better. Okay, I got you closer now. So you can see how it's thinning right here as I'm pulling it apart. Okay, so that's a little over staple length. So instead of pulling it all the way apart, what we want to do is grip this end, grasp it here, and pull. Let it just, don't pull fast and hard, just gentle, steady pressure and feel those fibers moving by each other. But before they start to thin, stop. Now grip over here and do some more drafting. So a steady pull as they start to slide by each other. Watch and make sure it doesn't thin out. Move this hand to there, this hand to there and pull again. Let those fibers slide by each other. Now take a little time to just familiar, familiarize yourself with this process, okay? So if you go to pull them apart, you shouldn't have to fight it, okay? If you're fighting it, move your hand further back, steady pressure, feel those fibers sliding by each other in the draft. And then just work your way all the way down your strand of roving. Now don't go too far, we're just drafting a little bit. This is just to kind of open up those fibers and get them ready to go so that they're not sticking together when you're trying to spin and draft and, you know, you don't want too many things going on all at once. So just kind of keep moving your way down and as you get more comfortable, you can just go faster. Just always remember, Firm, steady pressure, but not hard. Don't yank on it, because if you yank, you're just going to pull it apart, right? And the goal here is to keep our fiber in one strand, but to thin it out a bit by drafting first. Okay? This is how we prep our fiber. So now, once you've gone through your whole strand, I'm just going to use this small piece here. Is our sample. So this has been drafted so you can see how nice and light and fluffy it's looking compared to how the roving came out of the bag. Okay you can see how those fibers are loosening up and they're much fluffier and more airy. So Again, we want to make sure that we do all our prep first to make the spinning part easier. Because trust me, you're going to have enough to keep track of. You don't want to be battling your fiber at the same time. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to draft one more time. So just steady pressure. Don't go fast. Just nice steady pressure. Let those fibers slide by each other. You can see where I got a bit thin there. So I want to be a little more careful, so I'm going to move my hands further apart. And don't let any twist in there. If you get a twist in there, it's not going to let those fibers slide by each other. So try to keep it nice and flat. And just draft it out a little bit more. It's not going to take hardly any pressure at all now because we got those fibers like nice and loose and ready to draft. So I'm just drafting it out just a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a nice little piece of roving. I'm just going to wrap it around my hand loosely. And then I have my end right there. Okay. So now we have prepped our fiber and we are ready to start learning how to spin. I'm going to change the camera angle again because you'll want to see different things as I work on different things. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> but I'm going to change my angle so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to start working with our spindle. So now we are ready to work with our spindle. So, basic parts of a spindle, right? You have your shaft, which is the stick. You have your whorl, 
which could be a rock, a piece of wood, or a pretty, um, what's this stuff called? Resin whorl. And in this case, they will be a hook. Some of them don't have a hook. There are various types of spindles. We're going to work with this one. Okay? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a leader to spin our yarn on. Okay? So we're going to grab our fluffy fiber that we've drafted. Okay? Actually, the first thing we should discuss is spinning your spindle. So, put your hand lightly around the spindle and give it a flick. Okay? It doesn't matter which way you spin your spindle so long as you spin it the same way every time. So you can see you can either go this way or you can go this way. Okay, so just put your hand on the shaft, give it a flick, give it a flick. It's not going to spin very well right now because it's resisting, your hand is resisting the motion. But just give it a couple little flicks just to get a feel for it. Try the other way because you might find that one way is easier than the other. Whichever way works for you. Just remember which way that is. So I roll it towards me. So that would be, hold on, I gotta turn it into a spinning wheel. That would be clockwise. So when I flick towards me, clockwise. If I'm flicking away from me, counterclockwise. Okay? My default is towards me. That's my normal spin. Okay? So I'm gonna be looking at clockwise. You want to know if you spin clockwise or counterclockwise look at the end of your whorl pick a spot i'm going to pick this purple flower here okay so if i'm spinning towards me you can see it moves like a clock if i spin away from me it's counterclockwise or anti-clockwise however you'd like to say it okay that'll just help you figure out if you care to know it doesn't matter okay just know that whichever way you flick you want to continue to flick in that direction, otherwise you're going to take the twist out of it and it's going to drop. We don't want that. All right, we've discussed that. Now, let's make our leader. So we're going to take a little bit of our fiber. We're going to grab it from the end. We're going to put our hook through that. We're going to give it a couple of twists and then we're going to put our hook through that. Then we're going to give it a couple of twists and we're going to hook it again. So basically you just want to kind of get it bunched up on your hook. Give it a couple of twists. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. It's not so easy when you're trying to demonstrate. Put your hook through that fiber and then put your hook through that fiber. And then put your hook through that fiber just until it's holding on. Then turn your spindle sideways and we're going to draft. Remember how we did that steady pull? We're just going to draft out a little bit, but not too hard or you're going to break it off. And then start adding your twist. So I'm still turning towards me. So you can see my thumb is on the top and I spin it towards me. And that's adding twist to the yarn. Okay, so I'm going to slide my fingers out a little more. Yeah, I'm going to continue to twist towards me. Slide my fingers out a little more. Continue to twist towards me. So I'm spinning in the same direction every time. So now we have yarn. I'm going to take that and I'm going to slide it to the bottom of the hook. And I'm going to go around the shaft below the whorl okay and come back up and around the hook okay and now i can let go of it i have a leader all right now if you're having a hard time with that don't get hung up on it Okay, the point here 
is to enjoy spinning on your hand spindle. So if you can't make that leader, this is where a little piece of string or wool will come in handy. Oh, my lights are flickering. This is just a loop that I made and it's probably too long, but doesn't matter. Put your shaft through. And I like to do a double loop on the bottom. Okay, so you can see how it's wrapped around the shaft underneath the whirl. Come up over the whirl, around the hook. Now you're ready to spin. Again, this is like training wheels for your bike. And honestly, I've been spinning for years with hand spindles, spinning wheels, with a rock, whatever I've spun with. I'll use a leader all the time. Okay, I don't consider it cheating which some people do. There are purists who think you should do every step the way it was done in the olden days, which if you want the challenge of it later is fine. But when you're learning, do not be afraid to use these training wheels. Okay. Now I'm just going to wrap this a few times around there because my leader is a little bit long. Okay. All right. So now we have our leader and our spindle. Okay. Now, <clears throat> while you have your leader on there, just practice flicking. Again, I'm spinning towards me, and you'll see that eventually it runs out of steam and it starts spinning back the other way, okay? So the trick with using a hand spindle is knowing that point when that spin stops and it starts going back the other way, all right? So flick, there, and I'm going to grab it right there because it was just about to start spinning back the other way. So what happens is it takes all the twist out of your yarn that you're making, okay? So that's just something to be aware of, that your spin is only going to go for so long before it hits crisis point and starts unspinning, okay? Now, I'm just going to set that there. I'm going to tuck it under my sweatshirt, actually, so it doesn't fall to the floor. And I'm going to take this fiber. I'm going to pull off that chunk that I was making a leader with. We're going to start with nice, fresh, fluffy fiber. Okay? And I'm going to just wrap that around my wrist. And I'm going to take this piece here. I'm going to go over the back of my hand, okay? You want it behind your hand because if you have it hanging in front of your hand, when you're spinning, it's going to get caught in your spindle and it's going to mess you up. Okay? So take your end, go over the back of your hand, and then catch it between your thumb and your finger. You can do it with either hand. Okay? i comfortable spinning with the fiber in my left hand and the spindle in my right. You can absolutely reverse it, and it does not matter if you are left or right-handed. Okay, when I'm spinning on my wheel, I use this hand to draft and this hand to guide it like onto the wheel. But when I'm spinning with the hand spindle, I'm actually drafting with this hand. I'm right handed, but I use my left hand to draft when I'm using a hand spindle. Just something I've noticed. Okay, so it doesn't matter which hand you use. Um, if you're trying and it doesn't feel comfortable, switch hands. And you may find that that feels more comfortable and more natural. That's what you should do. All right. Lecture over. I know I talk a lot. It's just my thing. Okay. So we have our leader. It's hooked over our hook. And we have a loop. So we're going to take this fluffy end of the fiber. Put that through the loop. And fold it back on itself. Okay, so you can see how there's that little bit of fiber. And we're going to pinch that right there. And we're going to give our spindle, let it hang suspended. Okay, give it a flick, whichever way you're going, towards you or away from you, but always at the same time. When it stops spinning, grab it. 
okay? We're going to do what's called perk and draft. So you're going to hold that between your knees or perk it. We have all this twist into the leader up to here. Where we're holding the fiber, the twist can't travel past there into our fiber supply. Twist acts like glue. So once the twist enters, it's glued together. Okay? So while this is resting, you've got it perked. Grab it there and draft your fiber. Okay? So a steady pull. And then slide your fingers up, which will let the twist in. All right? And then pinch it there. Don't go too far or you're going to lose this. You're going to lose the consistency of your yarn. So once you've done that, take out your spindle again. Give it a flick. When it's about to start untwisting, grab it and park it. Okay? Now, I'm going to try to get closer to the camera here. So you can see, you can probably see better over this. Okay, you can see the twist is in the leader and it's in there. So now what we want to do is pinch. See how the twist can't go past there? You see how the fiber is fluffy on this side and twist it up on this side. So we're going to hold it here to keep that twist from running all the way up there because it's going to go there. All right, twist wants to move. And we're just going to draft this out a little bit. So we get like a thickness we want and then we're just going to see if I can get this to show slide our fingers up and you can see how that twist runs into the fiber right now you can see how inconsistent my yarn is and that's fine I'm more consistent once I get going but you don't want to go this thin when you're starting because when I add more twist to that, it's going to get over twisted and it's going to snap. So aim for more this size than this size for your starter yarns. Okay, so we've used up all that twist. You can see how our leader has no twist in it anymore. This is getting a little bit soft. It's not quite as twisted anymore. So we go back to our starting position. Okay, give it a flick. Whoa. That was a wild one. Okay. Flick. And when it starts to twist back the other way, grab it. Park it. I'm not going to draft much at all. I'm going to go for a thicker yarn. Okay. So draft if you need to, or just let that twist run into there. All right. So grab your spindle. Flick, and when it's ready to start spinning back the other way, grab it, park it. I'm going to draft that just a little, and let your twist in. Okay, so now you can see, like, I could probably go a little bit farther, but this is probably the amount of fiber that I want to start winding onto my spindle so I'm not handling as much fiber okay now we just let the twist into this so you can see when we let it ply back on itself that this piece here has next to no twist in it so what we're going to do before we load this onto our spindle is once more we're going to flick until it's ready to start spinning back the other way then we're going to stop it but this time, instead of letting the twist move, we're going to do a butterfly wrap. So wrap it around your thumb. Okay. Then go over your little finger, over your thumb, over your little finger till you get to your hook. Now unhook your fiber from the hook. So now you can see you can start wrapping it around the shaft of your spindle and just unwrap it from your hand onto the spindle. But you want to make sure that you don't go too far. You need to leave enough room 
enough length left here to go back up over your whirl, around the back of your hook, and then through the middle. Okay? So now, we're ready to spin again. Keeping my fiber over the top of my hand so it doesn't get caught up in the spindle. All right? Now we're going to, you can see it's just hanging there. It wants to untwist a little bit, but it's going to find a balance spot here shortly. Okay? So then we're going to grab our spindle. Flick. You can see even if it goes off balance, it's still going to twist pretty good. So right at the point where it's going to start twisting back the other way, park, draft if we need to, and then lick the twist. Here, I'll do it this way. So here's our, I got cats jumping all over the place. Okay, so you can see how it came unhooked from my hook. It's not a big deal. Just go back around. And rehook, okay? And then we're just gonna let that twist into our fiber, but I lost most of it when it unhooked. It's not a big deal. We're gonna go back to spin, give it the flick, stops. So as soon as it starts backing off, I grab it, park it, draft it, let the twist in, okay? As soon as it starts twisting back, grab it, park it, draft if you need to, let the twist in. Flick. As soon as it starts spinning back, grab it, park it, draft it, and let the twist in. Okay? Now we're back to, we have a long length again, so we're going to go around our thumb, then over your little finger, over your thumb, over your little finger, till you can get down to here. Wrap that on. You can make it as pretty or as messy as you want. The spindle doesn't care. Then come back up over your whirl, around the back of your hook, and through the middle. And now you're ready to spin again. Okay? Now, I'm going to adjust the camera again. I'm going to show you the next step. When you're ready to start moving on from your park and draft, we're going to do it in a standing position, and I'll show you how you would use it in a standing position. Editing Tammy here. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot to show you a very vital part of hand spinning, and that's how to join your fiber when it breaks off. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some fiber. Just one little piece. This will do. And I'm going to get this started. So again, for the starting, we just put our little bit of fluff through that loop, fold it back on itself. Now you can see I've switched up. Now I'm holding the fiber in my right hand and controlling the spindle with my left. I'm ambidextrous that way. But just remember, always spin in the same direction. So always flick towards you or flick away from you, but always the same direction. And I'm going to switch it back up because this feels odd. But I can do it both ways. All right. So let me just wrap this on the spindle. And then we'll go over how to join your fiber. There's a couple of methods. All right. So, we're spinning away. You can see that this is coming off the spindle, okay? But here's our fiber, and I draft it, and oops, I go too far, and I break it off. So now I have this fiber and this fiber. So, 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build up some twist in this. I'm going to park it. And I'm going to take the fiber I want to join. Now make sure both ends are fluffy. And I'm going to lay this alongside. Draft it together. And then I'll let the twist in. And now it's joined. So I'm going to build up the twist again. And I go to draft and oops, I pulled it apart again. So here's the next way. Now I have twist in here. So what I'm going to do, kind of wrap this around your finger so the twist doesn't travel. I'm going to split this piece over open again. Make sure both ends are fluffy, no twist in either end. And I'm going to take just a few fibers off of this one. And I'm going to lay it. See how that makes like a V? So I'm going to lay this fiber in that V. Draft them together a little bit. And then I'm going to let the twist in. And there we go. Once again, it's one fiber again. Okay. Now let me get this on the spindle so I can work closer to it. The one that I recommend as a starter that you use the most secure way to do it, let me just get us started again here. All right, drafting and oops, pulled too hard and it came apart. Make sure both ends are fluffy. Make a V with your fiber on your spindle. Take your supply yard fiber, lay that in the middle. Then pinch that all together and draft it a little bit and then let your twist in Then add your twist. Now, when you start doing this, you'll probably end up with a slightly thicker spot. Okay. But for now, we are just learning to make yarn. Focus on that first and worry about perfection later. As you get more comfortable with it, you'll learn how to draft that V and how to Use just enough fiber from your supply hand. Lay that in the middle. And then add some more twist. And then let that, oops, let that into the fiber supply. Okay. It's very hard to try to do this on camera. And anytime you're worried about your yarn falling apart, just add some more twist. And you can see I've got lots of twist in here. And I can just twist it, let it slide into my supply. So there's a couple of methods for how to join your fiber back to your yarn when it breaks. So. Editing Tammy out, let's get back to the original video. So now we're ready for advanced drop spindling or hand spindling. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Move my table over. I'm just giving myself some room. Now, first thing you need to do is you need to keep hydrated. So have yourself a drink. Okay, let's roll. So we have our spindle, we have our fiber. I'm gonna get this back onto my wrist. I'm gonna wrap that a couple more times. All right, so we're ready to spin. So we flip towards us. You can see how I just didn't follow my own rule. Put the fiber over the back of my hand and it almost got trapped in the twist. So flick, hold on. So you can see how I have some twist in my roving and that's gonna stop it from drafting. So first thing I'm gonna do 
is unwrap that and I'm going to let untwist that because as soon as there's twist in it, it won't draft. Okay. So I'm letting all that twist out and now I'm just going to lightly rewrap it, put it over, make sure my fiber is coming over the back of my hand. All right. Now let's see how rusty I am. I'm also going to draft a little bit just to get me started. Okay. Let's see if I can do it anymore. And flip towards me. While that's spinning, I'm drafting and letting it run up. Then flick. While that's spinning, I'm drafting and then I'm letting it twist in. Grab it. Flick. Draft. Letting the spin in. So it's just kind of a continuous thing because you're pinching here the twist can't move up and it starts to unspin a bit but you catch it before it goes too far add a little more twist okay i got something stuck in my fiber so hold on a second okay And I am short and I have short arms, so that's probably as far as I want to go. So what I'm going to do is wrap it around my thumb, thumb finger, thumb finger, bring it up, catch it, wrap it onto your spindle. Okay. Now I have a little bit of a twist in there, so I'm going to untwist that and pre-wrap it. That's my lovely cats climbing on everything and knocking everything over. Are you stuck, Latte? Yeah, he's stuck. Hold on, I gotta go rescue my cat. So here's the culprit. This is who got stuck up on the top shelf. And now he's all pouty about it because I had to go rescue him. Kids, I tell ya. All right, where were we? Oh yes, we were attempting to spin. Okay, so I'm going to shake out my fiber. Wrap it around my wrist. Take it. Oh, I got my chair in the way. Ah. Move. Thank you. Okay, come up over the whirl, around the back of the hook, and hook. So what we want is to kind of make this all just like a continuous thing. We're just constantly draft, let the twist in, add some more twist, some more spin, draft, let the twist in, draft, let the twist in, add some more twist, wrap it around my thumb, thumb finger, thumb finger, ah! Got it cooked on my ring. Wrap it on. Now, if you're taller than me, you can probably make a longer strand before you have to wrap it onto your spindle. But I'm short, so I don't get very far. Okay. So always same direction. So I'm always flicking towards me. Let the twist in, drop, let the twist in, drop, let the twist in. Running out of spin, add some spin. Draft, let the twist in. Draft, running out of spin. Kind of keep half an eye on that. Now, the longer your strand is, the less quickly it will unwind. Get that spinning again. I'm probably way out of camera range now, but still doing the draft. Now, before you wrap it on, you'll always want to give it one last flick. So you're adding extra twist in there. And once you wrap it onto your spindle, that twist is like water. It'll flow back and forth in the fibers. So if there is a lot of over twist, you're going to lose a lot of it as you're winding it on. Okay, so let's finish this strand and then we'll go over how to apply. Okay, 
And always give yourself a little bit of grace time and just draft that first little bit before you add your first twist. So you can see why I say don't let this hang down because it's going to get caught up, right? There we go. I dropped it. It unhooked. So we're going to wrap it back on. There's nothing to panic about here, by the way. It happens. Just try not to break your spindle when you drop it. I'll just wrap that back on. Hook it back on. And if you're having problems with that, you can always go around that hook a couple of times just to make it a little more secure. Okay? So, let's just... There we go. So spin, drop, twist, drop, twist, drop, twist. And I can see out of the corner of my eye that I'm starting to lose my spin. So get it going again. Move the spin in. Now, there's twist in there, which is preventing me from drafting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch at the hook and then just untwist my fiber. This is why, another reason why we're working with the shorter length. It's a little easier to manage. And you can even like throw that over your shoulder if you want to keep it out of the way. There we go. Towards me. And the longer your yarn is that the spindle is hanging from, the better your spin time is going to be. I don't know what the laws are of physics that make that happen, but it is a fact. Okay, now you can see if I grab this and did a twist, that fiber would get sucked in, right? So tuck that under my arm. I'm going to wrap this around my wrist so that it's not going to get caught up in that fiber towards me and then I'm going to wrap this on my spindle all right this is the last piece I have so I'm just going to hold that all in my hand don't squish it you don't have to grip it tight gently hold it gently And spin it towards me. So basically you're trying to keep track of a lot of things. So that's why I say take your fiber prep seriously. Now normally I would wrap this on. But I'm trying to just finish it off. And I think I'm just mucking myself about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off just that last little bit of fiber. Because I am trying to demonstrate. It's harder than it look, seems to, you know, demonstrate while you do something. Just getting that over my hook again. Because I just need to add that final bit of twist. And then I'm going to do what's called the butterfly. And I'm going to... And I'm going to drop my spindle. Okay. Again... Nothing to panic about. Just pick it up, wrap your fiber back on. You may end up losing a little bit of twist when that happens, so just be aware of that. But it does happen. Don't panic. Okay? We have our spun fiber on our spindle. We can leave it as a single, and you can you do that, but you're not going to have as much strength in it as if you plied it. Okay? So what we're going to do is you can learn how to do something that's called an NDM plying bracelet. 
I'm just going to show you because we're only dealing with a little bit like this and I suggest you start with just a small amount build up to greater amounts as you go but because we just have this little bit I'm gonna wrap it around my thumb and then I'm just gonna go I'm gonna end up doing a plying bracelet okay so I went around the back of my hand then I'm gonna go over my bad finger around the back of my hand over and you just want to do it loosely okay don't pull it tight or you're gonna cut off the circulation in your hand and you'll never be able to get the fiber off so we're just gonna wrap our hand around our hand come up go over that middle finger around the back of your hand go up over that middle finger and just keep doing that until you have all the fiber well it's yarn now you've made yarn congratulations it's a singles but you've made yarn and we're just going to do that until all the fiber is off your spindle okay so now we've reached where it attaches to our leader um you could probably break it off but it doesn't hurt to have a pair of scissors. Now cut your yarn, not the leader, because you want to keep that loop on your leader. All right, so we're just going to cut that off. And we're going to take that end and the one that we have wrapped around our thumb. Before we do anything else, we're going to tie those two together so that we don't lose track of them, okay? Just tie them in a knot. No big deal. Knot. Okay? Then we're going to take this bit that's over our finger. We're just going to pull it off. Leave it around our wrist. Okay? So we have one strand coming off each side of our wrist. So you want to wiggle your yarn to get these two pieces lined up evenly. Okay? And now we grab our handy dandy spindle again. When you ply your yarn, you want to go in the opposite direction of how you spun your yarn. So, when I was spinning, I was flicking towards me. So now that I'm plying, I need to flick away from me. Okay? So you can see, flick towards me is clockwise, flick away from me is counterclockwise. Okay? So what we're going to do, take our little loop off our leader, put our knotted piece through there, and then we're going to flick away from me. And let that twist in. Hold on. I wanted to show you how to take the fiber off your hand. So flick away from me. And then your hand just slides between those strands line them up before you let the twist in okay so flick flick line them up let the twist in okay now i'm going to give it one more flick away from me then i'm going to do do the butterfly so around my thumb over my little finger over my thumb back and forth like a butterfly till i get to the spindle and then I'm going to wrap it on. So you can see that we have made plied yarn. Okay. Then we're going to go back over the whirl. And I'm hooking it twice around that. Now I can see that that's not plied enough. So I'm just going to back it off a bit. All right. So I'm flicking away from me to ply. And that was a horrible flick. It just wobbled everywhere. Put your hand through the middle. Line up your strands before you let that twist in. Yep. 
you can tell that I'm a better flicker towards me than I am away from me. Okay. And that looks about right. You can check to see if you have enough twists so your yarn should ply back on itself like that. And then we're going to butterfly down, wind it onto our spindle. Get back over our whirl, around our hook a couple of times. Okay, let me tuck this under my arm so I can show you. See how that's on my hand, on my wrist, right? So you go between the strands and then between the strands. So your hand just kind of waves in between those strands and that'll keep them separated and from tangling. So we're going to flick away from ourselves, line up our strands, and then let the twist in. Don't let the twist in before you have your strands even because then you'll end up with, like, let me show you. You'll end up with little pigtails like this and a mess, okay? So always straighten out your strands before you let the twist in. And you can see, like, this is normal for when I'm plying, when I'm flicking away from myself, I always have an unbalanced spin. Well, not always. That one actually went well. But I generally have an unbalanced spin. But it's nothing to be concerned about. You just want to add some twist. All right. So there we are. Now we have plied yarn on our spindle. So I'm going to put this on the floor so that it doesn't fall there and break. And I'm just going to let it flop around while I unwind this yarn till I get to my leader. And then I can just untuck it. And here we have it. This is spindle spun yarn. And there you go. You've made yarn. Woohoo! Isn't that exciting? And it wasn't that hard, was it? Just be patient. Take your time. You will get it. Okay? I've been spinning for years, and you can see how thick and thin this yarn is. But that's because that's my preference for spinning. But you can worry about making it perfectly even later. For now, just focus on getting the motions right and learning how to handle the fiber, the spindle, and all that stuff, and, you know, handle, maintain your twist, and the technical stuff and the perfection can come later when you have the basics under your belt. Use any cheat you can get. There is nothing wrong with training wheels when you are first starting. Then as you get better at it, you can start to put those aside and spin from a thicker roving or without pre-drafting whatever the case may be that can come later for now just focus on learning to handle your spindle and getting that twist into the fiber so you can make yourself some yarn and once you get the hang of it i won't lie it's probably going to be really frustrating when you first start stick with it it'll click it'll get easier and then you can start to enjoy it and when you get really good, you can go out walking and make yarn while you're walking. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this little lesson on spinning with a hand spindle. For those of you who are here because you purchased a kit, thank you so much for your support. I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions, my email is in the description box down below, as it always is. Feel free to email me with questions. And to all my regulars, thanks so much, babes. Happy you're here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.